The most important thing to know about sea level rise is that it's happening. A lot of people say if sea level rise is happening, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when and by how much. So it is definitely happening. How quickly it's going to happen is the only answer we need to find out. When the streets flood and you, know, you can't get out of your own house without being soaked to death, it's, you know, it's kind of difficult. I've lived here for a couple years and um, the, it's been an issue from day one. There's probably other places where it, it's life-threatening for some other people, but I c kind of perceive flooding as, as, as something that, you know, that is a problem. Driving the car and feeling as though you're driving through a big body of water but, but there's no place to go because the water is so high everywhere around here that there's no place for the cars to go. A lot of people think that if we cut emissions, that's the way to stop sea level rise. It's not true. We can slow things down, but we are committed to a certain amount of sea level rise in the, next, in the coming centuries at least. You'll notice that here along the beach, the buildings are so close to the water. And we have this law in Florida that created what's called the Coastal Construction Control Line. And it's a line that was drawn all along Florida's sandy beaches. And basically, when you go seaward of this line, the damage from hurricanes, it increases exponentially. And do you know where that line is? It's west of A1A. So everybody's ignoring the line. Some of these buildings were here before the line was drawn, which was in the 70s. But a lot of them, they just get permits and they, they justify it by, oh, it's the line of construction. So we have all of these areas that are, these, this construction that's happening so close to the shore. And it's a problem because the sand, we keep re-nourishing it. You shouldn't be building this close to the coastline. We're not asking enough questions. We're really not asking enough of realtors who buy and sell those properties with people. Do you know what's coming? Maybe they don't know. But I think maybe they should be better informed. Architects now, I mean, you're in both my professions. Our architects, what are they building? That homeowner that's on Mola Drive, she feels that if she raises her sidewalk to her house at the same level that that walk up, this is six inches, that she'll be good. And I said, you did realize that when Sandy went through, it literally flooded the first floor of your house. She says, well, that was unusual. Maybe that's not so unusual. Maybe that's just a precursor to what's really going to come. As a professional, I draw a hard line in the sand. When people asked me to buy property, and I had one who wanted to be next to the river, I told her no. I said, if you want that property, you're not buying it with me because it's a bad investment. And it's going to flood. Your insurance rates are going to go up or not exist. You're going to have your house flood. What's the point of that? Go someplace else. The first step in being prepared for this threat is communication, it's outreach. We have what's called adaptation barriers. The reason we're not doing what we need to be do, doing that would save us money and protect us is because people don't realize that there's a risk. It's politicized, there's all of these emotional stigmas around climate change. From my research, what I found is that the way you communicate with people is through their own experience and through their own connection to where they live. When you tie it to someone's experience or where they live, it's a lot more meaningful and powerful. Whereas what's happening now is we have all of these kind of cookie cutter phrases, everyone's being very technical, and all of this science is not, there's, there's this gap between information and action. We have this knowledge and it's not being applied because it's not being translated to decision makers.